not just say that. Servus and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio on and off since 2016. Last week, there was a pretty historic event in Germany because the country had a prominent visitor. The new King of England, King Charles, came to Germany on his very first official state visit in his new role, and he was the first monarch in history who was allowed to give a speech in front of the German parliament, the Bundestag, which was kind of controversial because some people criticized that a non-elected official should not be given a voice in a place that's all about representation and power of the people. But overall, I think that he and Camilla left a pretty good impression in Germany. And part of this was certainly due to the fact that he actually gave parts of his speeches in German. Yes, the King of England speaks German. So did his father, by the way. And Philip was pretty much fluent. And the reason for this is that the British royal family actually has a lot of German ancestry. Now, I'll admit, I have seen a couple of brief snippets from Charles' speech in German news. It was kind of all over the news. But I made sure not to watch the whole thing so that we can watch it together. The first clip I found is actually not from the speech he gave in the parliament, but from the state banquet that took place later that night at Schloss Bellevue, so Bellevue Palace, which is the official residence of the German president, the Bundespräsident, Frank-Walter Steinmeier. In case you're wondering, yes, Germany actually has a president too, but unlike in the US, the functions of head of state and head of government aren't combined in one person, but it's actually two different offices. The chancellor, Bundeskanzler, so Olaf Scholz and previously Angela Merkel is the head of government and the president, Bundespräsident, is the head of state. So the president is technically the highest public official in Germany, above the chancellor, but really has more of a representative role in Germany. Kind of similar to the British king, which brings us right back to King Charles. So let's see what he had to say. So this is only a minute and 33, which is probably not the full speech, but it's fine. It's probably the highlights. Es ist schön von Ihnen, dass äh, Sie gekommen sind und mich nicht mit einem Dinner for One <lacht> alleine no lassen. He did not just say that. Okay, hold on. Um, those of you who don't know what he just referenced, I think mostly Germans and I think Swedish people might understand. Is that? Because I know that there's another country in Scandinavia where they also watch this. I think it's Sweden. Anyway, so Dinner for One is the name of a skit that all Germans know because we watch it every year on New Year's Eve. And I actually talked about it in my New Year's Eve episode from like two years ago or so. So check that out. You'll learn all about Dinner for One. It's kind of like a cultural treasure. Some people hate it. Some people love it. I personally love it. I think it's hilarious, especially if you've been drinking a little bit, which is, you know, usually what I do on New Year's Eve. Anyways, it is actually British and we watch it in British English in Germany. I think sometimes they show it with subtitles, but everyone knows it in British English. And it is from a British comedian, I think from the early 20th century. And one of the German public broadcasting institutions at one point, I think in the 50s or 60s or so, um, decided to record it like one of those performances. And that recording then ended up in German TV. And we watch that, as I said, every single year on New Year's Eve. And yeah, it's called Dinner for One, as he said. It's about an older lady who, um, I think she's turning 90, and all of her other friends have already passed away, so she's kind of just celebrating by herself with her butler. I think it's really funny. But anyways, that is like hilarious that you made that reference because in the UK, and I think in most other English speaking countries, nobody knows of this skit. So he probably won a lot of Germans over with this, and I mean, he made them laugh, which, I know a lot of non-Germans will be like, oh my God, the Germans are actually laughing. I thought they had no humor. Anyways, other things that I wanted to say already is that his pronunciation is so clear. It's really, really, really good. And then also, I think the subtitles were translated wrong at the beginning. I don't know who did that. He was addressing the audience in the formal address, the formal U, which is capitalized Z in German. And they translated it to lowercase Z as in third person plural, them. Kind of complicated. If you don't know German, that might be hard to follow along. But yeah, he was addressing the crowd. He wasn't talking about some third person group. Meine Frau und sich sind tief gerührt, wie herzlich wir in Deutschland empfangen würden. Over all these years, okay, now we're back in to so English. many ways, I you could definitely tell, obviously, like, meine Frau, he had the, the British or the English R, but that's totally okay. Struck 
by the warmth of the friendship between our nations and by the vitality of our partnership in countless areas. I really like his accent. It was, Mr. President, a friendship which matters. That is so weird to hear him say Mr. President. Just because when we talk about the German Bundespräsident, we call him Bundespräsident. We don't just call him President. And especially when you hear Mr. President, that's something that at least in my experience, a German is only familiar with in terms of the American president. Like Mr. President, when you hear that in English, it's like, okay, American president. Anyways. I said greatly to my mother, the late queen, who cared deeply about the bond between our two countries. Our countries are working together to promote global health, to help developing countries overcome their challenges and prosper, and to advance the urgent and vital journey towards net zero. I like that he said that. Okay, now I'm getting drunk. Drinky drink. Oh, by the way, very important in Germany. Always look the person you're cheersing with in the eyes. Otherwise, it's bad luck. Okay, so that was the first clip. I honestly don't have like a strong opinion about the royals in general. I never really followed them. I'm not like a huge fan. I know there is a lot of stuff you can criticize about them, um, but I really thought that the way he's speaking is very calming, very royal-like, I feel like. Um, and I really liked what he said, that I thought that was a really good message really positive message. But as I said, his German was extremely good. I mean, I don't know who he practiced this with beforehand. I'm sure he has lots of resources, maybe a coach that he went through the speech with beforehand. But just like, you know, the difficult sounds like the CH, the ich, the, all the vowels, he did a really good job at that. But I mean, as I said, that's not really that surprising with all of that German ancestry. I looked into that a little bit and the German ties of the royal family actually go all the way back to the year 1714, when after Queen Anne died, the only possible heir was George Louis of Hanover, who then became King George I. Queen Victoria, who I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with as well, also had a predominantly German bloodline, and she also married a German prince, and they were actually the ones who made the German tradition of the Christmas tree popular in the UK. And it was their grandson, George V, who was also married to a German, Maria von Teck, known as Queen Mary, who eventually tried to cut ties with the German family connections during World War I. He changed the last name from Saxe, Coburg and Gotha to Windsor, which is the name that we all know today. And his cousin Ludwig von Battenberg did the same. He translated his last name to Mountbatten. Battenberg, Mountbatten. And guess who belonged to that family? Prince Philip. Even though he was born in Greece as Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark, but he was German by ancestry, partly grew up in Germany, and as I said, spoke fluent German, and that is King Charles' father. Okay, next let's look at the speech that he actually gave in the parliament, in the Bundestag. I believe the speech was overall like 25 minutes or so long. This clip that I found is only four and a half minutes long. I'm assuming it's just the highlights. I found this on Sky News, and I picked it because it had English subtitles, which is good for you guys. So let's Es ist ein großer Ehre, heute bei Ihnen zu sein. Meine Frau und mir bedeutet es sehr viel, dass wir auf meiner ersten Auslandsreise als König nach Deutschland eingeladen wird. Okay, so now I can actually tell that he's reading that, which you know there's a difference between being fluent in a language, being able to just freely speak it, and kind of knowing how to pronounce the words, if that makes sense. For example, there is a Catholic church in Cincinnati that has weekly German masses, and the pastor, or at least last time I was there, like a few years ago, um, the pastor didn't actually speak German, but he knew how to pronounce the words from what he was reading from the Bible. And so you could kind of tell, like you could tell that he doesn't fully know where to put the emphasis. He doesn't fully know which part of the sentence means what. And um, I kind of just noticed that with King Charles as well. Like there were a few parts where um, he pronounced it a little bit funky or he stressed it a little bit differently or he said würde instead of wurde. Like you can tell he didn't uh, read it perfectly. Und vor allem, dass ich hier sprechen darf. Um das oh, that was the Erkenntnis president, by the way. Zur Freundschaft and Camilla, obviously. Zu Germans are always very impressed when someone speaks their language, our language. 
habe es die Geißel des Krieges zurück in Europa. Okay, now we're talking the about anger. the war in Ukraine. Uh, here was another example where he just kind of made the pause of the sentence, you know where the comma is, right at the wrong word. Hold on, I'll show you, in case you're interested. Seit ich das letzte Mal hier gesprochen habe, ist die Geißel des Krieges. Seit ich das letzte Mal hier gesprochen habe, ist die Geißel des Krieges, bla bla bla. That's how you would say it. And he said, seit ich das letzte Mal hier gesprochen, pause, habe, bla 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 bla. So like he, do you, do you see what I'm saying there? He obviously didn't fully know which word is what in that sentence. Or he was nervous. Der Angriffskrieg gegen die Ukraine. Angriffskrieg is a difficult word. Das unvorstellbares Leid über so viele unschuldige Menschen gebracht. Salose Leben werden zerstört. So, Und I just want to say something briefly about his accent. I feel like in this speech, it's not his pronunciation isn't as perfect as I thought it was in the other speech. Maybe the other speech was just easier and shorter and he had more time to practice it. Overall, at least for me, in a lot of cases, when people speak relatively good German, but still have an accent, I can't really tell the difference between a British English or an Australian English or an American English accent in German. I know other people can tell the difference. I think it's just a me thing, um, but to me, like, if I didn't know who he was, I probably wouldn't necessarily know if he's British or American with that accent. Menschenwürde, Freiheit und Menschenwürde würden brutal mit den Füßen getreten. Die Sicherheit Europas I like that he brings that up, even though, you know, they usually kind of stay out of politics a little bit. Aber die Welt hat nicht tatenlos zugesehen. Wir sind erschüttert von der Fuch furchtbaren Zerstörung. Furchtbar is a difficult word too. Aber wir können Mut schöpfen aus unserer Einigkeit zur Verteidigung der Ukraine, des Friedens und der Freiheit. I wonder... Yeah. This friendship... I wonder how he wrote this speech. I wonder if he wrote it in... English or if, if he even writes his speeches himself, I don't know. Um, but if it was written in English first and then translated, I mean, probably, right? I don't know how that stuff works. It meant so much to my beloved mother, the late queen, who often spoke of the 15 official visits she made to Germany, including her five state visits. The first of those in uh, 1965, came when our continent was oh, still Oh, I didn't even notice that we switched to English. Oh my God. <laughs> this is exactly what I was talking about when I made that video the other day about whether I think in English or German. I like will literally not notice. I don't, I don't notice which language is spoken or, cause I understand both of them. Um, that's kind of, well, I did not notice that, oopsie. Um, I don't know if we need to keep watching. Let's keep watching a little bit. Um, cause it's still interesting, even though he's not speaking German anymore. And I don't know, maybe he'll um, bring in some more German sentences later on. And the trauma of conflict. Hers was the wartime generation. And like my father, the queen had served in uniform that my parents' 11-day tour of Germany should prove to be a pivotal moment in the reconciliation between our nations was therefore a matter of great personal significance to them both. Meine Mutter wusste... Ah. My mother understood oh. the immense achievement that reconciliation oh, no. represented. And in returning to Germany time and again... What is happening? I thought this was just with subtitles and now they're suddenly dubbing? I did not know that. Oh man, so now I can't really react to his, his German speaking anymore. She was determined to play her own part. I don't like that. Perhaps it is for this reason that Her Late Majesty won a particular place in the affection of the German people. I have the deepest respect for people who do simultaneous translation. Today, if that's the official term in millions English. Millions of Britons visit Germany each year, just as millions of Germans travel to our shores. We sure do. Britons come to admire Berlin's vibrant culture and nightlife, making up Europe's 
largest visitor group to this wonderful city. So we are still, still admiring of each other's culture, dependent upon each other's economies and inspired by each other's ideas. More recent generations may think as readily of the Beatles or Kraftwerk. Yep, <laughs> or Rammstein, <laughs> or One Direction. <laughs> as they do of Brahms or Baron, but the web of cultural connections is as strong as ever. Okay, was that it? I guess so, all right. Okay, so that was actually very interesting. I don't think he is as fluent in German as his father was, but that makes sense because his father was much closer to the German ancestry. But it was definitely a really cool gesture of him to take that step and put in the effort to actually give the speech in German. And I mean, I don't know how many more German parts he had in that speech, it may have been much more, um, but you could definitely tell that the Germans, the German parliament, the German officials appreciated that. Also, what I didn't mention earlier, I was thinking that uh, Merkel was in that first clip too. I. Um, um, forgot to point that out. I uh, honestly wasn't aware that she still goes to those kinds of things, but it's pretty cool. Let me know what you guys thought of his speech, of his German skills, of his appearance, his message in the comments below, and also let me know what else you want me to react to. I even recently played with the idea of maybe starting a Twitch channel for reactions, but um, I'm not quite sure yet if I should do that, because I don't usually spend any time on Twitch myself, but let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. In that case, I could just do reactions live on Twitch with you guys and then post the highlights on YouTube. Um, also, one more thing, a lot of you guys have brought to my attention recently that you haven't been notified about new uploads on my channel anymore, even though you are subscribed and have the notification bell activated and all of that. I honestly don't know if something changed in the YouTube settings, but if you also feel like, wait, yeah, that's right, I haven't been notified about her new videos or they haven't been showing up on my homepage or something like that, you would do me a huge favor and maybe do yourself a favor too if you've missed some of my videos. Um, if you just went into your YouTube settings and made sure that you have the notifications activated there, obviously make sure that you have it activated underneath my channel. And if it's still not showing up then, um, I guess we gotta reach out to YouTube somehow. <laughs> maybe it'll also help to put some extra engagement on my videos, maybe leave like an extra comment down below, maybe a thumbs up, I don't know. I honestly don't even know if that'll help, but it might. Um, I do have a really, really cool video planned next that I care about a lot, that a lot of my German viewers actually helped me with, so thank you guys for that. Stay tuned for that video, and next week, um, there's a pretty cool announcement coming, so it would be really cool if you did not miss that and if you had like the bell activated and if YouTube could make sure that those people who want to know about it actually find out about it because it's a really cool announcement, you do not want to miss it. Um, but yeah, with that, you can also obviously follow me on Instagram, TikTok and Facebook for extra content. Thank you guys so much for watching, thank you for your support and for being with me over the last five years I think at this point five years. I started my channel in 2018. That's crazy. I really appreciate all of you and I will be back with the next video here in a few days. Cheers!